Good morning, this is Dr. Lee with another episode of DermPath Made Easy. This is a solitary cutaneous mastocytoma. Now this is a benign proliferation of mast cells forming a discrete fleshy red to yellow nodule and it can be anywhere from one to three centimeters in size. So these solitary uh, mastocytomas, they are a rare variant of mastocytosis. And they typically account for about 10 to 20 percent of cases of cutaneous only mastocytosis. And they, they are almost exclusively found in children. Uh, the most common location are the trunks and the wrists. Let's go in and take a look at, just review what the mast cell, mast cell looks like. So the mast cell has these uh, sort of round nuclei. Oftentimes um, they, they are dead centered in the middle of the cell, kind of like this and this one here. Um, occasionally they could be displaced along the side like a plasma cell. But the characteristic thing about these cells is that they they have these metachromatic or purplish sort of granules. And these granules contain both histamine and heparin. So histamine is uh, w one of the main kind of mediators of the allergic response. And heparin is an anticoagulant. So here's another picture of it. You can see it's sort of, we call this fried egg, uh, sunny side up fried egg. Um, because of the appearance that the, the nucleus is kind of dead center in the middle of the cell. And you can notice that all these uh, metachromatic to basophilic or blue granules. <clears throat> so here you got an electron microscope uh, image of photomicrograph of a mast cell. Central nuclei and multiple granules containing both heparin and histamine. So what does the mast cell do in tissue? So the mast cell does a number of things, but the thing we're gonna talk about today is the allergic response. So here you can see uh, ragweed pollen. It attaches to a cell. This is the first encounter. Um, and then your plasma cells produce IgE, which is an antibody which binds to the surface of the mast cell. And the next time you you get exposed to the antigen, in this case it would be ragweed pollen, uh, the mast cell um, degranulates and releases all of those molecules or all those granules of uh, histamine as well as heparin. So, so the function of histamine is it causes vasodilation and because the vessels are so dilated you get uh, massive edema within tissue. So, you know, this can range from some mild flushing, redness, erythema, to actually it could be pretty severe and even cause anaphylaxis and cardiogenic shock, or hypovolemic shock rather, not cardiogenic. Hypovolemic because all the fluid and all the plasma rushes out of the blood vessels and dumps into the tissue. So you don't have uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, fluid in the vessels anymore, so your blood pressure drops. Let's take a look at what these lesions look like clinically. So this is solitary mastocytosis. You can see it's, these lesions are typically anywhere from red, or, uh, red to pink to yellow. And they look kind of like fleshy nodules. And again, this is pretty much uniformly only found in uh, young people. There are a number of other variants, and we'll go over them briefly. You have the maculopapular cutaneous mastocytosis and this is urticaria pigmentosa. You have your diffuse variant of cutaneous mastocytosis, and then TMEP, and, and then finally, systemic mastocytosis. So the diagnosis of cutaneous mastocytosis, you have to prove that uh, it is not a systemic involvement. So you can see the four categories here of cutaneous mastocytosis, and then you have um, the systemic mastocytosis, and that, that's a clinical diagnosis with uh, associated lab findings. Now let's come to our lesion here. You can see that this is a, it's a polypoid lesion. It's certainly lifted off the surface, and you can see in the dermis there is no, 
no kind of solar elastosis or evidence of sun damage. So this may be a younger person, and you can see this, it's this effaced by this entire sort of trabecular to solid sheet aggregates of purple to pink cells. Let's take a closer look at what, the kind of, what, what these cells look like. It's hard to make out here because this is a digital image, but you can see that we have a pretty monomorphic population, which means they, the cells here, all the individual kind of darker cells and, and sort of the pink cytoplasm. So you have sort of a monomorphic appearance of, uh, of these small cells, and there's very little pleomorphism, and there should not be any mitotic figures. So this is solitary cutaneous mastocytosis, or cutaneous solitary mastocytosis, rather. Um, and here you got uh, you have a pretty good look. Some of these are actually right dead center. You would expect for mastocytosis, and it kind of looks like the Sony um, Sony side egg right there. So that's pretty much it. It's a fairly easy and straightforward diagnosis. Once you once you are able to identify these cells as being mast cells. Um, and it's in a sol it's solitary. There's not, in, there's no systemic findings um, clinically. Uh, it, it's a pretty straightforward diagnosis. So, again, from low power, we have a fleshy kind of nodule, uh, pink. It's they are usually pink to kind of yellow. And on higher power, you can see that monomorphic population of really bland uh, cells. Um, with sort of pink granular cytoplasm and, in this case, dark, variably dark nuclei. Um, by the way, these cells will stand for CD117 or CKIT. And um, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and until next time.